Hi, I'm Colin the Ed from Meet the Breakers, and we've just come to uh, the meet the secret, top secret Meet the Breakers testing facility here in Yorkshire. We're gonna what we're gonna do? We're gonna test out these two amplifiers, the RM500 versus the the Zatagi B550. Basically, what today's video is all about is about uh, two uh, linear manufacturers. Anyone who was uh, into CB radios and amplifiers will know that the the Zatagi and the RM. Now, the Targi and RM uh, both manufacture similar sort of pieces of equipment. Obviously, uh, if anyone's ever owned a, a Zatagi amplifier, will know they do less power than an RM. Will know that RM do more power. What today's video is all about is, is the fact that recently purchased an RM amplifier. Actually, it's an RM uh, KL500, and uh, I've had a few issues with it, and I've had a few issues with this sort of amplifier before. This is the uh, model of the. Uh, this is this is a dead one, by the way. This is my dead RM500. Now, what it is about this this particular version of the RM500 is that the feedback resistors and the combiner resistors inside the actual amplifier they're not they're not they basically to cut the long story short, this linear does too much power for its chassis. Actually, this am, this amplifier here has uh, been repaired and has actually been modified. I've had to take this amplifier for modification. Obviously this, this amplifier hasn't been modified and has broke down, right? But I've had this amplifier modified by a Meet the Breakers technician and this is what it did to the amplifier. I've Colin proofed it. <laughs> That's what I've done, I've Colin proofed it. Uh, beef the combiner up and I've beefed the feedback resistors up. I had to swap a couple of transistor out and I couldn't get the right one so I got the nearest I could get to the spec on it and instead of having like too low and too high I've put a low and a high and a low and a high. The only thing is don't drive these things with more than five watts. This one will do two ton as it is. You could put a bit more into it and you get up to 300 watt but you start having like thing the fuse holders burn out and they just give way. The other thing is the, the heat sink could do with a bit more it's, it's not enough. If you're going to use one of these, gentlemen, use it with a fan, please. The fuse, that's the only thing I could get at short notice. I beefed the fuses. It's a bit big, but it'll do the job. It'll stop it from going bang. So, as much as I can tell you. But it does actually work. You can use it again, Colin. It's safe. Just don't drive it too hard. They do run away with themselves. Thank you, Dave. Five watts in. That's what I'm driving it with. Yeah, that's what I'm driving at the moment. Because of the at transistor home. mismatch on it. Right. You'll look at because they're so two lower gains. Most you'll get out in it is two ton, and it does deliver two ton for five watts. I did creep it up a bit on about six. It will jump to about two and a half. You can actually get more out of it right. if you take the resistor and the capacitor out. And like, like I've done there, I've shorted that out. It's right. doing a bit more. If you want me to take it out and leave it as it is, so it's safety, it's doing about two and a half as it is. It'll do two and a half. So as it is, as it is. But with, it's up to you with when five you use in. it. That's enough for me. If you just want to, if you'd be safer to run it at two, to be honest with you, I just did a test on it. I've actually put eight watts into it and it shot over 300 watt. I would advise running it at that. No. Not really, if you want it to live. Well, this is, this is the RM, the RM's a target vid that we're going to do. I think it boils down to the fact that. This, all this here. The heat sink could do with a bit more fin coverage on it. Always run a fan on it. These ferrites, I use. I prefer using the larger type. They don't. You, these smaller ones tend to get a bit saturated, from my experience, when I've used them before, and I've oinked them out. You could get a better out of this if you swap these and put uh, SD1446 transistors with an O number, O letter on them, and you'll get you'll get a hell of a lot of power out of it. But it's uh, they get hot. There's just not enough heat sink there for the power that it's doing, and it's a shame because it's actually quite well thought out linear amplifier. Beef the parts up. Think, think of your customers and what they're going to use it for and charge a bit more for it. <laughs> so, I've got the amplifier back and now it's time for a test. Now, if you can just see these two amplifiers, obviously we've got a B550 here at side. 
Now Dave will obviously mention the clip, the actual heat sink and the differences in the heat sink. The power rating on the B550 is 50 watt lower on the box. It is 50 watt lower than the RM500. But let look at surface area on this B550. Look at look at how much more metal there is in heat sink, and it does less power. This is the, so RM have got less metal and more power. Obviously, the RMs are breaking down, but the B550s just seem to soldier on. I've never had as a target linear break. I've been a CB radio user for 15 years, right? And never, ever, ever have I had as a target amplifier break on me. I've had RM amplifiers in past, and I've all I've had is problems, issues, things going up, resistors dropping out, feedback resistors going up, going, just burning out on me. I've never had this problem with as a target. And another thing about these two amplifiers is they're pretty the same sort of price. You'll pick up an RM500 for about £242, £250. You'll pick up a B550 for about the same price. And I will guarantee you, out of the box, without any modifications, the B550 will outlive the RM500. You know what I mean? So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick test. Obviously, I've had this RM500 modded. I've had feedback resistors replaced. I've had combining resistors replaced. Uh, there's been a bit of transistor work, and I've also had the fuel stage took out. All common problems with this sort of amplifier. You see, this has still got the fuel stages in. They burn out. Obviously, as Dave's already put in the clip. These, the, 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 this is how the amplifier should look with the fuel stages in. Obviously, in this amplifier, that fuel stage has been bridged. These two feedback resistors have been beefed up. Obviously, if Dave already told you. And obviously, the, the, the combining resistors, uh, sorry, the feedback resistors, they're the combiners, they're the feedbacks. So, you, you know the work that's been done. That one's dead. Obviously, this 2012 revision of the RM500 is dead. But the pills are still working. So these pills are all working and they're all doing power. And they're all working. They're all want, it's all wanting to do 300 watts. But the actual infrastructure around these transistors, what's actually drawing the power, ain't up to scratch. RM, what are you playing at? What are you playing at? You're making inferior pieces of equipment here. You know, us breakers want, want linears that work. We don't want amplifiers that turn into this right this is just bang out of order you know what i mean we've got these these mrf affordable fives in the middle wanting to do power the wanting to work and you've got infer inferior components random you know this this melts these fry you know these combining resistors fry these aren't big enough you know what's going off rm I'd love for you to tell me. I want to know why you're making amplifiers that just break. You know, £250 these cost out at shop. £250 of my hard-earned money, right, goes into your coffers and all you can supply me is a linear that breaks. I think it's bang out of order, right? So what we're having to do is we're having to take us amplifiers to CB shops to be repaired or modified, right, so they, so they just safely work. It's bang our order, RM. You're just robbing us blind, and we're not, not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. I'm fed up. I will, I will add at this point as well. This is my last RM linear. If this linear blows up on me and goes tits up, I am never going to buy another RM linear. RM, I will call in the head. Will never ever buy one of your linears again. So I hope this linear stays and it carries on running like this out this B550. I've owned this B550 for six months, right? And I haven't had a problem on it. It just does 200 watts all day. 200 watts. Fair news, it's got a couple of fans on top, but that's about it. But I do assure you, this will run hotter than that. Hey, let's have a turn on. Let's see what's going off. Oh, the fans sound awesome. Right, turn that off. First we'll do B550. We'll, 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 we'll stick with the amplifier that I know that works. So we'll just turn it on. Get off 19. Right, first thing we need to do, we need to check SWAR. So if any amplifier 
manufacturer turns around to me and says, Colin, the head set up, it up to butt for amplifiers. I do assure you, my setup's working absolutely fine. So I'm going to move you over to my SP200 here, I've got set up here. And we're going to do a quick calibration. We're going to calibrate my swar meter and we're going to check before we put any power through my serial gain master that's been up about a week that the SWR is fine. So let's just flicker over to swar. We've got a nice swar there. That's not even moving. If you just uh, zoom in on needle, I'm just going to run key now. So we've got a nice safe swar. We've got a nice safe swar to start running amplifiers. So what we're going to do, we're just going to keep put B550 on, on setting 1. And uh, we're just going to move over to meter. I'm on 200 watt scale. So uh, the actual scale we want to be focusing on at the moment is not the top one, it's the middle one. This is the 200 watt scale in the middle. So let's go. On 200 watt scale. Setting six, we're not going to bother with other settings, all I'm bothered about is raw power. That's 180 watt. 180 watt, let's just flick over to Swire again. Let's just check them Swire just to make sure there's no callus, just to make sure that anyone watching says that I've got a nice Swire. I've got a 1.1 Swire at 180 watt on a serial gain master. So, that's the uh, B550. Now, let's just have a look at how much RF power I'm actually putting into my amplifier. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it off. Check the power. Currently putting 4 watts into the amplifier. So, my B550, my B550 with 4 watts in generates 180 watt. That's out of box. That's an unmodified B550. Obviously, I can put more into it if I wanted to, but I think 4 watts and a B550 is a safe amount of power. Right, let's just flick over to RM500. Let's just see what the difference is. That's a B550. Remember, the targets are proving to be a lot more reliable and linear than an RM. For the simple reason is they're not greedy. They're not doing stupid amounts of power, and they just run. So, let's just move over to RM. Let's just swap my patch leads over. Great, so, I'm going to fire it up. Mate, it's the first time I've keyed up on this linear. It's just come from shop. It's just been modified. Forward. Four watts in. Fucking hell! Look at that! Look how much more power it's doing! It's doing over 200 watt! We're cruising at 250 watt! Hence the reason why these amplifiers break! Right? Look! If you can see, we're doing 220, 25 ish watts! You know what I mean? The difference from, from the B550 and the RM500. Let's go back to these components. If I if I had bought this amplifier from new, from the shop, right, I wouldn't have had the upgraded components inside. And already, just with that simple key, I can put my hand on top of each sink and I can feel it getting warm. RM, you've got it completely wrong with RM500. You need an heat sink like a B550 on your RM500s. You can clearly see you need an heat sink like that on that to run the sort of power. I mean, I've just I haven't changed anything. You've seen the actual experiment I've done. I've swapped amplifier. All I've done, I've got two amplifiers. They've got the same pills. That's got four MRF affordable fives in. That's got four MRF affordable fives in. Right. This is doing more power with the same drive, right, and you've got a smaller heat sink, less metal space, less surface area, but it's doing more power. I prefer a B550 over an RM500 any day. In a nutshell is, I bought an RM500, factory standard, right, I've had to have it modified because it was burning itself out basically. 
the power, the transistors that were, were being produced by the amplifier were eating the components around itself. And basically what I've done, I've had to have it modified by Dave over at Lambs, and he's modified the amplifier, he's made it so this amplifier is safe to use as an RM500. The B550 had been bought from the shop, I've never had to modify it, I've run it, I've not had a problem out of it. I've only used this amplifier for three months. I haven't overdrived it, I've put four watts into it, I've followed manufacturer's instructions, I'm running a good antenna, and all they want to do from factory standard is break. For years we've been brainwashed by it, by RM. RM <coughs> advertising this extra 50 watts of it to, to target. The target rated at 250 watt, but an RM 500 will do 300 watt. So breakers are just thinking, oh I'll just buy an RM. They're buying these RM linears, right? Pushing the target at back, right? Which is a better amplifier, right? So all, the, all RM done, have done is made their amplifiers cheap. Right, cheaply med, the break all time, and you forever you have forever having them repaired. But the targets just seem to run forever. So basically, if you're into your four pill amplifiers for CB radio, you're better off with a target amp. I'm Colin the Ed. This is Colin the Ed's Meet the Breakers. Bye.